cashed out this week. Five years, $137.5 million. This is all on potential. Yes, he did go undefeated throughout the remainder of the season. But who knows? You could have a Matt Castle on your hands here. What do you? What exactly do you think and know? Or what is he going to be? And Big O says, must be nice. Same as Kaepernick. And at this point, I don't know if Kaepernick ever is ever going to get a job again. Uh, but the 49ers are definitely generous. And I think they didn't want Jimmy G to walk out the door at all. They didn't want him to leave. They didn't want him to possibly find another team. They, they didn't even want to wait for other teams to be interested. With the quickness, they, they signed him to a massive deal. The biggest deal ever. And a shout out to the Cubs. Breaking news. Appreciate that, Michael Bella. You, Darvish, a former Ranger, signs with the Cubs. What does that mean for the Cubs? Is that going to push them over the edge? And I'm interested to know, or are they going to try to sign Jake Arrieta, or is Jake Arrieta gone? And the deal is worth $126 million over six years. He could possibly reach 150 with incentives. Big L says a QB can't save the 49ers. <laughs> Probably right about that. They got more to think about, especially the defense. Also, Josh McDaniels doing a pump fake on the Colts right after the Super Bowl it was announced. Josh McDaniels going over to the Colts. A shout out to DJ Knox in the chat room. Next thing you know, they already put out the graphic. They had the Colts graphic out there. It was like, yes, we want to welcome our new coach. Josh McDaniels. They had the picture up there and everything. About five minutes later, they had to take that down. Obviously, Josh McDaniels was in contact with someone, probably Belichick or somebody with the Patriots, and he decided not to go. Interesting. To me, that he just burned his he just burned his uh bridge even more. I mean, come on. How many how many more times are you gonna Burn bridges with people. Shout out to 334 Bama Boy in the chat room. He says, you Darvis blew that World Series last year. He did. The other part of it is, uh, you Darvis was tipping his pitches. So, Cubs, Big L, I hope he figures that out. Because you cannot tip your pitches in Major League Baseball. Especially, especially in the World Series. Because when they figure it out, it's over. And at that exact minute they figured that out, he was getting tagged left and right. Home run, single, double. It was just, it was crazy. So, yep, you Darvish goes to the Cubs. Uh, Like I said with Josh McDaniels. Also, The Rock and Sylvester Stallone, if you guys didn't hear about this, is trying to convince Gronkowski to try a movie career. He's already thinking about retiring. Uh, and in the words of Bill Parcells, once you're thinking about retiring, you're already retired. And I think it's probably time. His body has got to be aching like crazy. He's had hip injuries. He's had elbow injuries, shoulder injuries, back injuries, concussions. I mean, the list goes on and on for all of the issues that he's had throughout his career. So at this point, maybe it is smart. Maybe it is smart for him to retire. And going to movies. If he thinks he has a pretty good career, maybe he should do it. So, I had an opportunity to talk with a good friend of mine, Eric DeWalt, this past week. Uh, he wasn't able to come on the show live because he is right now in Philly. Uh, he didn't make it to the parade, but he's in Philly right now. Celebrating with his friends and family with this Eagles Super Bowl. So, I had an opportunity to interview him. It's a great interview. Uh, Take a listen to it. Uh, We'll be right back after that. Uh, But we're talking about Eagles Super Bowl run. Also talking about some other things. Uh, But he's a really good dude. So this is Eric, me and Eric DeWalt 
had an interview from earlier. Appreciate uh, DJ Knox uh, and jumping in the chat room. Uh, everybody else in here as well. So take a listen, and we'll be right back. Sports show. We got a very special guest, the one, the only Eric DeWalt, the one that got me into podcasting. Everybody, Eric DeWalt of the Kane and Ice Show. He's also an Eagles fan, so we're going to talk about all of that. But how's it going? The champ is here. <laughs> the champ is here. The champ is here. Oh, hey, what's going on, Dan? What's going on, BS Three Sports Nation? Oh man, appreciate you being bring me on the show, man. Yeah, and, man. Uh, I, I, you know, I may have, I may have talked to you in the starkness, but you definitely took the baton and ran with it. And uh, you know, just proof of your talent and drive that I saw in you. So yeah, definitely, you know, man. You can a, see a talent scout or something. Yeah, yeah. Be a, a radio show, <laughs> podcast, talent scout. You know, finding people. You know, underneath underneath the rocks and and the uh, hard places and the crevices, you know, and get them in the podcasting. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> but um, like I said, Eric is an Eagles fan. Eagles won the Super Bowl. I can't believe it. Um, I've been I've been like throwing up every day since that day, and my stomach has just really funny. been upset. I don't and uh, I don't <laughs> I just don't really like that. I don't like throwing up at all. It's like the worst feeling in the world. But the Eagles won. I got. To, I had to pay my respect. That's why I had to get Eric on the show, um, and I'm glad that uh, he was able to come on. So, first of all, I got. I got to ask you this. Um, we we're going to rewind back into the season when Carson Wentz went down. Did you think the season was over, or were your, was your hope still as high? I want you to be honest too. Uh, I'll be very honest because. Um, and actually, I was at the game where he went down. Um, and so, of course, being at the game, you're not hearing what they're saying on television, right? Uh, and so, of course, checking our phones, you know, and you see a little blurb, you know, possible knee injury or something. But, you know, he walked off the field. So I'm like, ah, oh, it can't be that bad to let him walk, you know, off the field unassisted. Um, but then by the time... Uh, you know, shout out to uh, Shango, Cowboy fan. Um, by the time he came and picked us up, I guess by then news had broke, you know, pretty sure knew what it was or whatever. So we're riding back, and I'm like, man, you know, we're just – I mean, it was kind of – even though the Eagles won the game, it was kind of like a downer, man. It was just like not depressing, but you're just thinking, okay, foals. And he came in and played – you know, played well against the, the Rams. So I was like, okay, you might have a little something. But it's like, man, you know, he was just doing so much and playing so well. It was a downer. Um, did I think we had to recalibrate? Was I, at that point, thinking Super Bowl? No, I was really just thinking, okay, I wonder, you know, how we can uh, wrap this thing up and finish the season and because the NFC was so loaded with good teams, you know, just really want to see where we fall in the playoff hierarchy of things. Um, didn't know what to uh, And, you know, uh, honestly, I, I was really scared that what are we going to do if Foles gets hurt, right? Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, my mind mostly went to worst-case scenarios. Uh, and, you know, do we bring in Kaepernick? What, what do we do now, you know, to back up the polls? So, you know, I even kicked around the idea of should we try to get Romo out of the booth to back up polls, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, obviously it worked out. No yeah. injury. So. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I When that happened, the, I remember you were at the game. you were taking pictures and everything. I was having a good mm -hmm. time. And then when that happened, I was like, wow, this could totally change everything. And the day after that, I did a podcast, and the title was Nick Foles to the Rescue. And I did a question mark and an exclamation point because I was like, there's no way. Right. There's no way Nick Foles is going to be able to lead this team to uh, throughout the playoffs to the Super Bowl. I was thinking, no, absolutely not. Now you, you get into the end of the season, and that horrible game, which was basically like a – a Pop Warner game <laughs> with the Cowboys and the and the Eagles. That was so disappointing on both sides, but obviously more so on 
the Cowboys side because they had everybody. Zeke was there, Dez was there, everybody was there. And and the way that game went, I was thinking like, there's no way the Eagles are going to get any further than probably the first or second round. Um, and then they just right. start to go through each team, and I'm thinking like, they they can't surely make it to the Super Bowl. And then they make it to the Super Bowl, and I'm like, what is going on in the world? What is going on in the world where the Eagles make it to the Super Bowl with a backup quarterback? So, what was your All right. exactly? Yeah, you, know, you know, I get it. Um, what what was your excitement like when when you noticed that that the team was going to the Super Bowl? And uh, and, and Eric is is originally from Philly. He's been an Eagles fan, so he's not like right. one of those bandwagon guys. But what was your feeling when when you knew they were going to the Super Bowl? Um. And, you know, of course, the, I guess, the Vikings game, right, NFC Championship, you know, it, it was wrapped up, you know, well before the actual game had ended. And so I wasn't, I wasn't so much surprised we beat the Vikings. Now, I was surprised the way we beat the Vikings. I'll say that, I, you know, I really thought, okay, we can get to the Super Bowl, especially once we got home field. I was like, you know, we could get to the Super Bowl. But it's going to have to be, like, the blueprint I saw was, like, Denver. Like, our defense is just dominating people. And our quarterback, you know, just kind of doesn't give the game away. You know, kind of like when they won their last Super Bowl. So that's kind of the blueprint I imagined. And honestly, I was way off because Foles completing, like, 75% of passes and, you know, hitting Jeffrey deep on the Vikings and all that <laughs> stuff. Um, I think of the Vikings game. I wasn't totally shocked that we won or that we won by a good bit. And I was surprised at uh, how much we dominated their defense. But uh, I think the Vikings almost fell victim to the way they won the week before. Um, the Eagles played that Saturday. The Vikings played Sunday. We all know the guy from the Saints totally blows the tackle. Uh, you know, Diggs goes in and scores. They win. They're all pumped up. And I think – I think they were still riding that high going into the week of practice. And I think when they came to Philly, I just don't think they were as settled and as mentally ready as they normally would have been uh, had they won in a less spectacular fashion. And so I, um, I think that, you know, I think that's what you saw. Once the once the Eagles defense settled down and figured out what the Vikings were doing, uh, you know, they pretty much dominated after that point. Eagles pretty much dominated. So. I was excited, um, but, you know, uh, and I'm old, so, you know, I clearly remember 04, we got to the Super Bowl, didn't finish, so I was excited, you know, we beat them, but uh, I was real like, okay, you know, hope they're taking it seriously, I hope they're looking at this business trip, hope they can finish, you know, like, all right, we're playing the Patriots, you know, they're going to play for 60 minutes, you know. Uh, and start sizing things up. So I think because we had such a big lead late in that game, you know, when it did finally end, by that point I was already starting to size up, okay, how do we match up with Patriots kind of thing? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely definitely a level of excitement. But, um, you know, for me it was almost like, okay, we've got to win it for this to really mean anything. Otherwise, it's just another – failed season at this point. Right. Especially right. having number one seat. Exactly. And uh, we're talking with Eric DeWalt, a host, co-host of the Kane and Ice show, uh, which is on YouTube. You can definitely go check it out. Great content. Uh, so, you, and you're right with the e- with the Eagles and, and the Vikings situation. I was thinking the Vikings were on cloud nine. It was almost like they had already won the Super Bowl with that, with that <laughs> play. So, when it, when it came to that game, I think they were so high and pumped up. They just they just kind of went in there just thinking that this is we're going to the Super Bowl. And and they maybe they were thinking ahead, uh maybe they just weren't fully prepared. But I want to I want to give um a, a shout out and congratulations to to Doug Peterson really coming in with Nick Foles and developing the system around him. That's pretty much what he what he did. Um, you know, you haven't had Darren Sproles all year. Uh, you know, you haven't had probably a really stable running game, but he was he was able to figure it out, and I, I think uh, that was huge. Yeah. 
you know, especially going into the playoffs. Now, uh, so you get to the Super Bowl. 